Welcome to Pre-Calc 12, Chapter 5.8. We're going to look at solving problems with logarithmic and exponential functions. We're going to look at some financial problems. And this is slightly more difficult because we have regular payments or deposits. The first formula is called future value. It's payment times 1 plus i in brackets to the power of n minus 1, all divided by i. i is the interest rate per compounding period. n is the number of payments. Note that this is a simplified version of the future value formula because compounding periods don't necessarily match the payment periods. Okay, and the other thing to note is that this is a savings formula. So future value is for savings. This is the present value formula. It's for loans. So we have the present value is equal to payments times, in brackets, 1 minus, in brackets again, 1 plus i, raised to the power of negative n, and then close that bracket and all over i. And remember again, i is the interest rate per compounding period, which has to match the payment period. Okay, let's look at an example. Determine how many months are required to save $1.3 million with monthly deposits of $1,000 at 5% interest rate. That is compounded monthly. So we have FV equals, and it's always good when you're learning new things is to write down the formula. Now we substitute our values. We have 1.3 million, so that's five zeros. We have 1,000. And we have one plus 0 0.05 divided by 12 to the power of n minus one. That doesn't look very good, that's an i. So this is 0 0.05 divided by 12. We're going to take the reciprocal of this and multiply it by this. So we have 1.3 million equals, this is 12,000 divided by 0 0.05, so that's 240,000. Now we can evaluate. To the power of n minus one. So now we have 6.416 repeat equals 1.00416 repeat to the power of n. And we need to take the logs of both sides in order to be able to solve for the exponent. Bring the n out front and divide both sides by log 1.00416. So n is approximately 447.065 months. We need to round up. Because 447 months is not quite enough to get 1.3 million. So this is 448 months. And this is roughly 37 plus years. So if you wanted your answer in years, you would have to round up again. This would be 38 years. So if you want to save for retirement and want $1.3 million in your retirement fund and you're investing at $1,000 a month, the key here is you're going to need 38 years. So you got to start early. Let's look at another problem. A couple want to borrow $400,000 to buy an apartment. They can afford $2,600 a month with an interest rate of 3.5% compounded monthly. How long will it take to repay the mortgage? Please note that if you're actually borrowing for a mortgage, mortgages are compounded semi-annually, which means twice a year. 
So our formula is PV equals. Now we substitute our values, 400,000. That's five zeros. 2,600. One minus one plus 0 0.035 divided by 12, raised to the power of negative n, all over 0 0.035 divided by 12. Common mistake is to put the annual interest rate in and forget to divide by the compounding period. So please remember to add that compounding period into the factor for i. Okay, we can start doing some of the divisions. And we're going to take the reciprocal of the divisor and multiply by 2600. This gives us 891428.57. We should carry values to the cent. And this is 1.002916 repeat to the power of negative n. We take this over to the other side to divide it. So we have 0.44872 equals 1 minus 1 1.002916 repeat to the power of negative n. Since this is negative, let's move it over to the other side. So we have 1.002916 repeat to the power of negative n equals and we'll have to move this to the other side. So we have one minus this. Now we need to take the log of both sides in order to solve this exponent. So negative n log 1.002916 equals log. And we subtract that and we get 0.55128. So n equals negative log. 0.55128 divided by log 1.002916 and that is approximately equal to 204.52. So we round that up, round up, because if you round down, you won't have paid off the mortgage. So that's 205 months. And that is roughly 17 plus years. So $2,600 a month to pay off a $400,000 condo in 17 years, that's not too bad. Most people have an amortization of 25 years. This length of time is called the amortization. This is 17 years. Let's look at another problem. When we're doing music, there's 12 semitones. The semitones are C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. And recall that each octave is double the previous. So D3 is 146.8 hertz. Another note is played at 659.3 hertz. What is this second note? So we just do 659.3 equals 146.8. And since double is our rate, we put two as the base. And it's n over 12 because we have 12 semitones in order to double. Two to the power of n divided by 12 equals, we have 659.3 divided by 146.8. This is 4.49114. It's good to carry a few decimal places until your final answer. We need to take the log of both sides. So we have n over 12 log 2 equals log 4.49114. So n equals 12 times log 4.49114. Divided by log 2, and this is approximately, and this is equal to 26. 
it has to be an integer value because we're dealing with semitones. If you don't have an integer value, please round it off to an integer value. Now we have 26 semitones. So we have 26 divided by 12. This gives us two remainder two. So our answer means it's two octaves and two semitones. So if our note was at D, we have to go up two semitones. So we're going up to E. We're going up two octaves as well. So our answer is E5. That's the second note. The note is E5. Now, if you were given a question that had A, four, and you worked it out to two octaves and five semitones, you would have to go one, two, three, four, five. So your answer is D. We have four plus two, but since you wrapped around, you have to carry another octave. So it would be D7. So that's how you calculate something where there's a carry for the octave. But in this one, we don't have any carrying because we didn't wrap around. And let's look at a few more examples. We have earthquakes, we have sound levels, we have alkalinity. The formula for earthquakes is the magnitude is equal to log of the intensity divided by the standard intensity. For sound levels, we have the decibels is equal to 10 times the log of the intensity over your minimum intensity. For alkalinity, we have pH is equal to minus log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So let's put that down, magnitude. We have intensity and we have standard earthquake. Here we have decibels. Here we have the intensity. And here we have the minimum sound level. And here we have hydrogen concentration. Okay, fortunately, these are fairly straightforward to solve. So we have the magnitude of the California earthquake equals log intensity of the California earthquake over S, your standard earthquake. So this is 8 equals log IC over S. And we get 10 to the power of 8. We exponentiate both sides to the base of this logarithm, which is 10, and we get IC over S. So IC equals 10 to the power of 8 times S. Now, the magnitude of the Japanese earthquake, MJ, is log IJ over S. And we have 6.5 log ij over s. Again, we need to exponentiate both sides with a base of 10. So this is 10 to the power of 6.5 equals ij over s. So ij equals 10 to the power of 6.5 times, times s. So how do we compare the intensities? We simply do I C over I J. So this is 10 to the power of 8 times S over 10 to the power of 6.5 S. We can cancel out the S's. And this is approximately 31.6 times more intense. That is, the California earthquake is 31.6 times more intense than the Japanese earthquake. 
Let's look at a sound problem. What is the intensity of a jackhammer at 110 decibels? Again, start off with the formula. You can say I0, but typically we say I0. Substitute the value. We have 110 equals 10 times log I over I0. Simplify. We get 11 equals log I over I0. And now we exponentiate both sides with a base of 10. So we have I equals 10 to the power of 11 I0. Last example. Determine the hydrogen concentration of a solution that has a pH of 3.5. So we have pH equals minus log a h plus substitute our values 3.5 equals minus log a h plus exponentiate both sides we have 10 to the power of negative 3.5 equals a h plus so the hydrogen concentration is 10 to the negative 3.5. OK, before we finish off, I'm going to give you some terminology for finance because they have a lot of terminology. We have annual. We have monthly. We have weekly, and we have daily. OK, annual means just once per year. Monthly means 12 times per year. So we'll put per year here. And weekly, there's 52 weeks in a year, and we just use 365 days for the year. We also have two more terms. Actually, they're called prefixes. We have semi and we have bi. Okay, so you can have semi annual, and this is twice per year. We don't have bi annual. Uh, we have semi monthly. So we just multiply by two, so that's 24 times per year. We have bi monthly. So this is just six times a year. So when we go by, we divide by two because it's every two months. We don't ever really use semi-weekly because it's very inconvenient. But we do have bi-weekly. So this is 26 times per year. And daily, we don't use semi or bi for daily. So these are the terms that you should come across when solving financial problems. And that completes this lesson.